The subject for this video is the unijunction transistor. While it was in invented in the early 1960s, it is still used today. Let's look at this plate in front of you to get an overview of what I will be covering. Over here on your left is your typical unijunction trigger circuit. The trigger pulse is timed by a capacitor and a, res and a resistance, and usually a potentiometer or fixed resistor, sometimes a constant current source. It has three connections known as emitter, base 1, and base 2. Note that base 2 is near the little tab. These c come in two types largely that I'm concerned with is the 2N 2646, and the 2N2647, they come in a little metal can with this tab here. And so, on the output, E produces a sawtooth waveform that we have here based on the RC time constant of this capacitor and the resistance here. It will operate from 5 to 20 volts in my test. It probably goes higher. As I said, E has a sawtooth, but B1 is of great interest because it produces a spike. I'll look at a larger blow-up of this oscilloscope waveform shortly. It produces positive going pulses that are used to fire SCRs. The frequency of the pulse rate is, by the formula, R times C times the natural log of 1 divided by 1 minus N and take the reciprocal of that result and gives you the frequency. N is known as intrinsic standoff ratio, which we will cover momentarily. In the upper right corner, here is the basic construction of a unijunction transistor. It consists of an N-type bar silicon. I've heard that there's P-type bars of silicon, but I have never seen one. And it has a single uni or one PN junction formed by a PN junction here. That is your emitter, and base 1 and base 2 are connected to VCC and ground. Notice, of course, that the PN junction is not dead center. Looking to the right of this, in this small drawing here, we have the resistance from this center point, which is the PN junction, represented by a diode. We have RB1, which is from the uh, center junction to ground. Then we have RB2, thus base 2, from the center, from the connection well, the PN junction to positive. The total voltage from B2 to B1 is known as VBB. All right, let's look down closer. Oh, one thing. We will be dealing with a concept known as intrinsic standoff ratio. Intrinsic, intrinsic standoff ratio depends on the resistance of RB2 and RB1. All right, here is a blow-up of the waveform you've got. This is the charge circuit on E. As the capacitor charges up through a resistance, and you notice it has, a, it's not a linear curve. It's sort of, as you charge up, you're going to end up with the RC time constant business. I'll show you that momentarily. And when it reaches a certain breakover point, it quickly discharges massively. That's what you see here. This breakover discharge point is this point here. As you discharge the capacitor, through this from E, through this resistance, you will generate that positive going spike here on B1. 
All right, we've already discussed how I have this curve here on the charging circuit. Um, now I'm going to discuss how to get a linear ramp instead of a curved ramp. This is normal with an RC uh, charging circuit. So how would I get to a uh, more linear ramp? On this particular plate, here's the same circuit again, but this time I've used an LM334 constant current source to charge a 0 0.022 microfarad capacitor. Um, in this case, as you can see, I've got a very linear curve here. This particular uh, frequency, for instance, is 3.3 kilohertz. The horizontal divisions are 100 microseconds per division. Let's move on down. And here is the representation on an oscilloscope. Here is my charge curve, very linear. And a lot of circuits need this linear curve. It reaches the break point, rapidly discharges the capacitor, and there is my spike. And that spike, in the next video, is going to be used to drive an SCR. All right, to finish this off, here is an actual picture of the unijunction transistor. That's what it looks like. There's a 0 0.022 microfarad cap. In this case, I was using a 100K pot and had not switched it over to the constant current source yet. It's a, it's a fairly simple circuit to build. These unijunction transistors are still available today. Uh, particularly Newark Electronics has thousands of them. They're going to cost between $1 and $2 each. I bought five off of eBay. They were new old stock for 6 bucks. Plus I had some I salvaged out of some scrap industrial boards. And so we're going to... Okay, that's going to complete this introduction to unijunction transistors. The following vid videos are going to demonstrate using a unijunction to fire an SCR. And then I'm going to cover a newer device. Like I said, these were invented in the early 1960s at least. We're going to look at a programmable unijunction transistor later on. Thanks for viewing this video. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks.